هذا هو اليوم الذي صنعه الرب فلنفرح ولنتهلل به المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور Christos on esti epne kron thanaton, thanaton batisas, keti sentith ni masi zoif karis amenos. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. Christos on esti, good morning. So the timer started. Let's go for the time and date stamp. It is... 15 hours into the day of Thursday, April 24th, 2014. Good. Yet again, we are here for another segment of the BTS vlog. <laughs> well, at least the mornings are consistent. You know, the, the, the first, you know, vlogging here at the, at the beginning of the day. That's now consi a, a consistency, anyways. Uh, so... <laughs> It is just a matter of getting uh, vlogging done during the rest of the day. Uh, I do seem to be a bit fatigued, though. I don't know what it is that uh, is making me uh, tired like this, but uh, anyways, it's kind of the way it is. Uh, I feel like it's uh, still 3 o'clock in the morning. So... It's going to be a bit difficult to function. I did go food shopping. Yeah, I think it was yesterday. And I've been so, I'm sort of looking around to see what to do with the uh, new uh, uh, items I want to put on the menu for the kitchen diner. And one of the issues I'm having is I like hot dogs, but... I'm not satisfied with uh, what's available, so I am looking into making my own sausages because this, that's what a hot dog is, it's basically a sausage, and more and more I'm convinced that's what I'm going to do because it's just, the, the, the quality of what's out there is getting worse and worse and worse in terms of uh, the stuff that's already prepared. So when that stuff gets... Uh, worse and worse and the prices go up the only solution is to go make it yourself that's what I did at some point um, I know it's the roast beef was get, you know in terms of the cold cuts was getting worse the quality was getting worse the price was getting high and I learned how to make my own uh, roast beef I learned how to do my own cured meats so the next step now is to learn how to do sausages, and once I learn how to do the sausage meats, uh, then uh, no more uh, no more buying hot dogs. I just simply buy uh, uh, the uh, the whole meat. The uh, the basically uh, there's two cuts of pork. There's pork tenderloin, and then there's uh, the uh, well, basically it's called ham. That's either the picnic shoulder or uh, you know, pork butt. Uh, that's essentially your uh, ham there. Those are the two types of sausage meats that you could use. Uh, ham, uh, the pork butt and picnic shoulder, is essentially used for hot dogs. That's your, the, the, the pinkishness of the hot dogs is where you get, unless it's all beef. <clears throat> that's where you get the... Uh, the pinkish is the, 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 it's basically a ham. It's supposed to be a ham. But uh, the ham is not really ham itself, as most people would know it, but it's kielbasa. So uh, the goal would be to make a kielbasa and have the kielbasa as the hot dog. So that would, that's going to be, uh, I think, the next goal for myself. Uh, and then... Uh, after the ham kielbasa, uh, then I'll try other recipes, uh, either a mixture of pork and beef, or the beef hot dogs, you know, or, or beef sausage. Beef sausage are essentially salami. 
Uh, the salami is, is, is more complicated because uh, with the salami, you do have to uh, control the spices more. There's a, a more an issue with spices. So, uh, I think uh, you start off with the kielbasa, which is an easier one, and then migrate your way to the more complex, which is salami. So, I think that's where we're going to go with things in terms of, uh, you know, the kitchen diner. Uh, this is it. When one way is closed for you, uh, the kitchen diner allows you to open up another. So, uh, and I think is I've noticed this from uh, the roast beef cold cuts that once I started making my own roast beef cold cuts that uh, the cost actually got cheaper it got cheaper than uh, buying the individual hot dogs themselves so uh, I'm assuming the same thing will be true for uh, the hot dogs the, you know for the hot dogs will be cheaper than uh, making them in in the sausage form uh, rather than buying them individually so i think that would be a bonus that would be me and my food cost will go down uh, i have more or less taken pop off my list uh, of what i'm buying now so uh that's because i found that um my taste for for uh the uh, standard standard beverage these soda beverages uh has gone it's, it's not there anymore it's not what it used to be uh because of this i've tried out some new stuff actually and it's, it's really interesting with the some of the new stuff i've tried and this is one of the reasons why it is mostly water based it's either a cold brew iced tea and this is an asian type of iced tea made with loose leaf tea or it's uh a uh sort of like a fruit punch type of thing, but it's a mixture of fruit punch. I didn't, I, what I decided to do is to, to, well, let's see if I can mix, mix, mix the, mix the uh, powder. These are powder drinks. And so I looked around to see if I could sort of experiment with this stuff. And, and actually it was, uh, mixing fruit punch with iced tea actually worked out pretty good. It, there's a ratio there. Once you get the right ratio, that the uh, fruit punch iced tea can make actually tastes very good. So... Uh, and it's the best thing in terms of the fruit juice. It's the best fruit juice I've had or any you know, around. So uh, that's where I'm going with that. Uh, so you know the menu is really coming along. I've got that new spaghetti, uh, which is uh, it's a it's a bruschetta spaghetti sauce that works out worked out very well, and it's very easy to do. I've got it done down to a point where. Uh, it is on on lines in terms of how fast you can have it. It is on the lines of fast food, so you know things are coming along. It's, it it is the, the kitchen diner is now more, more functioning. I still have to finish doing the resurfacing, but you know these are things that are these are things that are worked on in progress. These are things that are, are done in time. So <laughs> uh, I, I suppose I, I suppose they will get done eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, I think our time is up now, and I will see you. Uh, if not tonight, maybe tomorrow morning. Well, not necessarily morning. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But, you know, my usual morning. <laughs> All right, take it easy. <laughs>
but the problem is, is that uh, after you've done your clothes, you want to dry them. And if you go to a store and you look for uh, clothes drying racks, and you'll find a number of indoor clothes drying racks. But they're uh, up, they start at $50 and they work their way up pretty quickly to $100, $150 uh, to, uh, <laughs> you know, to buy an uh, indoor clothes drying rack. Well, this has an air dry feature, so it does dry the clothes to a certain degree in here, but it does have to go over here afterwards. After it's dried in here, you have to move it over to here to finish drying up. And what is this? These are these poles here. And you've seen these in the background before in my videos. These poles here, these are old um, these are old floor stand lamps. Remember, they're, they're these halogen ones. They have the black, the black top like that. You know, the black bowl on top. And they've got the halogen lamp across. Well, the fixtures are broken. I really didn't have anything to do with them. But they were sitting around. And I said, I'm going to need them at some point in time. So I didn't throw them out. Uh, a couple of years back, I was out taking the garbage. I found these, uh, this, uh, these, this is two sides of a baby's crib. Realized I could use them for clothes drying. Saved them. So now they're put together on top of the uh, lamps. They're tied together with cord now. I've got a uh, uh, clothesline cord across them. And what it does is it makes, it gives me uh, a way to, uh, uh, if you will, to dry my clothes. So this is the clothes drying system and the entire clothes drying system because it is from the garbage, because it is uh, uh, reclaimed and reused materials, it costs me nothing. So this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about freeganism, when I'm talking about the freegan ideals. You try to do as much as you can with whatever you can and that means you do have to re recycle things, you do have to keep things until you find that there really isn't a use for them and then once you find there's not a use for them, then you throw them out. Uh, and that's how kind of it works. Uh, <laughs> as, as, off, as unusual as it seems. So, anyways, this is it. This is what you'll be seeing in the background. It is again. I this is. Uh, uh, I am a functioning vegan. It's a daily part. It's a part of my daily life. So, anyways, I hope this helps. Uh, I will be doing more in, in my vegan. This is also a video test to see if I can start filming and doing some uh, video test shots inside the kitchen diner. All right, take it easy. I will see you in the next segment of the BTS Vlogs. All right, bye-bye. All right, we're back again. Uh, I forgot to give you the time and date stamp. Not only forgot, but uh, I had set it up on the computer and forgetting, forgetting that uh, I can't see it from here. So I came back to do the time and date stamp. But rather than doing that as I was coming back and preparing for this, I thought I'd talk about some other stuff as well. So, uh, let me give you the time and date stamp. It is three hours and eight minutes into the day of Friday, April 25th, 2014. That is our time and date stamp. Handy little, little uh, device here. And uh, that's it. When you're doing freegan work, when you, when you are a freegan, you do have to be sort of inventive. And this is what I do is when I, go, I get boxes for deliveries or whatever, I save the boxes. And a little bit of tape here in the, um, in the corners to tape up the sides. And now you have a box uh, that I'm going to be starting to sort electronics in. Remember I have the electronics bent over here to the right. Uh, and I have electronics that need to be uh, sorted uh, for particular projects. Now, in order to do that though, I need boxes to put them in. And so these boxes now, a little tape on the sides here to hold it up. And that gives me the boxes that I need to uh, to uh, do the um, to uh, put the electronics in. So uh, that's that. And uh, now that this is going on, the cleaning is going on uh, for, for the laundry. I this has given me a uh, better handle on cleaning the closet, and the closet's being uh, more organized. So I will probably uh, sometime over the weekend vlog in the closet. Uh, show you the closet, so give you a little bit of a tour of the closet, and let you know sort of what's going on and in the progress uh, being made towards turning the closet from the uh, closet AV room to the closet sewing design room. So that's uh, how we're going to work that in. And uh, yeah, so we're going to have a, you know a fairly good time. There'll be uh, a variety of other shots in here rather than just simply me going on the couch or me, me somewhere else. So. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that's it for now. I will see you in the next segment.
Probably tomorrow morning. <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. Yeah, it's time for another BTS segment of the BTS vlog. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, it isn't going well. The uh, schedule seems to be shaping up. I seem to be uh, uh, getting a good amount of work done during the day, meaning not all the schedule, but enough of the schedule that uh, the direction is forward movies, forward moving. So that's a good thing. Uh, so I should say Christos uh, for those of you who don't know Greek, that means uh, uh, Happy Easter, more or less. <laughs> it actually means uh, Christ is risen. And we'll get into that a bit after our time and date stamp. It is 17 hours and 23 minutes into the day of Friday, April 25th, 2014. Now, this is going to sound, sound odd. Because if you ever watched the the, uh, the movie The Passion of the Christ, uh, and you see how they people put on these passion plays for the death of Jesus, uh, the emphasis on Easter is often placed on the death of Jesus. In other words, it's placed on the morbidity, the 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 the, the yeah. Well, let's know how to morbidity, the 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 horror of Easter and uh, of the of the uh, crucifixion of Christ. And uh, they drill into the fact that uh, Christ died for your sins and they want to see, show how awful it is so that you understand that you need to repent and that you have a debt to owe and that, uh, that a penitence is a must. In other words, there is a the theology, and that's what this is, is a theology, that Christ's mercy, although he says it's infinite and... Uh, and his love is unconditional. The church, the, particularly the Roman Catholic Church, and this is where it began, began uh, more than 800, uh, around 800 A.D., started believing that that Christ's uh, and God's uh, mercy was not unconditional, that it was conditional, and that you had to pay a particular penitence. You had to pay for your sins, that there's something that had to be paid for. Yet, if you look at the Gospel, particularly at the prodigal son, You'll find that as the prodigal son begins to return, the father comes out to meet him. And the, and the father accepts the son unconditionally. So the concept of tolls, the payment, the penitence, is not in the gospel. It's something that's created later on. And so this is why Easter, uh, for Catholics and beyond, uh, and, and all of the other denominations, uh, that we have around today are derivatives of of, of, uh, uh, of the Catholics. The only ones who aren't derivatives are the Eastern Orthodox. And, these, and this is where you have to be careful. Just because a church looks like it's Eastern Orthodox doesn't necessarily mean that it is. If an Eastern Orthodox looking church, or they call themselves Eastern Orthodox, has been in prayers, has been in con in, in, in contact with the uh, Roman Catholic Church. In other words, there is a ecumenism with uh, a, a common house. That's what ecumenism means. It means common house. If that ecumenism exists, then the Eastern Orthodox are no longer Eastern Orthodox, but they are now Catholic. They've bowed to the Catholic order, to the Catholic theology. And they only look like they, in other words, they appear to be Eastern Orthodox when they're really Catholic. Uh, and if you go into it and sort of examine what they do and what they believe, you'll find that this is that their church is very Catholic oriented. A lot of the theology, a lot of the practices uh, that they do, are derived from Catholic theology. In other words, uh, around the penitence of the, of the, of the sinner, uh, you know, of, of paying for your sins, of uh, that there's a debt to that is owed. Uh, yeah. And the Eastern Orthodox Church, this is actually quite alien, and we actually call it, and this is what, uh, why it's also uh, correct to call the fast, not simply a fast where you have to beat yourself up and sort of, you know, uh, consider how bad you are, but it's also a feast as well. And we actually celebrate Pascha in the Eastern Church as a feast. Pascha is not, is not, if you saw the Good Friday service, which most people say you're supposed to be dressed in black and, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, the 
music that surrounds us, and this is ancient music, this is music that was written uh, uh, around 300 A.D. and in, 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 in earlier. Uh, 300 A.D. Is, is the earliest written point that we can find in terms of the written record that, that we can find. But the church is also, we know this, is based on oral tradition. The cross in the Eastern Church, when you bless yourself, it's Father, Son, it's this, and it's Father on the right-hand side, and, and the Holy Spirit on the left side. So it's Father, Son, who sits, sits on the right side of the Father, and then the Holy Spirit on the left. So that's the way it does. Catholics have lost the three fingers, which symbolizes the Trinity. They use the hand there. And they do the opposite. The wedding rings are supposed to be on, on the Eastern Church or on the right hand side, on the right or on the right uh, finger, the right fourth finger. But on the Catholics, and you see now most modern uh, Christian wedding bands, they're on the left. Now that thing where things have been reversed. Uh, this concept of reversal of of looking at the sort of the temporal, the suffering, the morbidity. Of Christ uh, it is something that's very Western. It is in the Eastern Church that it looks beyond the morbidity, it looks beyond the physical, it looks beyond the temporal. That you get into the spiritual. Once you get into the spiritual, then you start having a celebration. And the in the the Good Friday service, uh, when you listen to something called the Agomia, uh, actually does that. It is very festive. It is very uh, joyous. It is not at all a, a, a morbid funeral, and everyone who knows, knows what an epitaphios is, and, and Tom Hanks certainly knows what an epitaphios is, because he's married to a Greek, part of the Greek service is the, the Good Friday service, and the epitaphios, which is the, which is the urn, is all decked out in beautiful flowers, and is not at all morbid. And so what happens is that Pascha is the celebration of death. And what happens is that if you understand Christian, Eastern Christianity properly, the death of a person of a Christian, an Eastern Christian, is his birth into the kingdom of heaven. It, this is this is his birth. So it's it's he dies from one life and emerges into the next life. And this is actually what baptism is. Baptism is is the representation of this. Baptism is we leave our old life and we and the old life dies, right? The old man dies, and this is what it, what's said in the baptismal service. The old man dies, and a new man emerges. So the old soul dies, the new soul emerges, as a, usually as an infant, and that's what baptism is. You go on throughout, you get to the death here, when you're getting to your old age, you're, you're going to die. Well, the same thing happens. It's the baptism all over. It's the old man leaving, and the new man emerging in the kingdom of heaven. This is the whole thing that goes on. And this is what Christ did. Christ came not to simply um, bear our sins. It wasn't a, 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 something that he had to do. But what he did is he came and showed us how, how to live as Christians by example. In other words, he set the example of how Christians are supposed to live. And that's why he says, for those of you who love me, take up your cross and follow me. You know, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. And that is the philosophy Behind, uh, if you will, behind a lot of the Christian lifestyle, if you were living that Christian lifestyle. And anyways, our time is up. I think we'll talk about this more in another segment. <laughs> Alrighty, Christos and Nesti. I hope everyone's having a good Easter week, uh, holiday. It, for us, it's still continuing, so yay. <laughs> well, I'm off for another walk. I have to watch and make sure this camera stays under the umbrella because, well, it's raining outside. Yeah. <laughs> it's raining out, uh, but uh, I do have to get uh, some uh, supplies, some spices actually, for the uh, roast that I'm making. Uh, I said I make, uh, in the kitchen diner, I make my own roasts. Uh, this is for uh, roast beef sandwiches. And it's basically this is how I do my cold cuts. So, but uh, you need spices, and I apparently didn't calculate well enough. And uh, I now have to go to the store, make a run to the store, and get some spices. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, yay for that. So uh, we can walk and talk along the way. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different because, uh, as you see, I'm under an umbrella. I got this umbrella that I have here uh, for about a buck. 
at one of the Asian department stores. So, you know, uh, you can't go wrong for a dollar. You know, you can find a lot of really good thing, things at these Asian stores. And so that's why I really do like them. Uh, as long as they work. And some, you know, sometimes they don't work. But the thing is, if they don't work, you've only spent like anywhere between one and five dollars so you're not really upset that you know, oh no i spent an entire dollar and it didn't work <laughs> you know it's, that's you know there's no use of crying over you know, because particularly on average if everything works if most of, well, I say not everything, if most things work if you get 80 percent uh functionality out of everything you buy in other words you only have a 20 percent failure rate of, uh, of the stuff you buy from the dollar store then you know what that's good because now you're saving so uh, that's kind of where we are and uh, before us now we were, we're talking about uh, uh, Eastern Orthodox Christianity and the difference between the East and West uh, <laughs> I just sort of thought about that now and the thing is is that there is a significant difference uh, between East and West and it's not, but most people, unfortunately, only see the facade. They only uh, look at the appearance, and if, if something appears to be one thing, then that's how they judge it. But you do have to go deeper. You do have to dig deeper and ask yourself questions as to what you're actually seeing and whether or not what you're seeing is actually real or true. Because unless you ask these questions, you may not know that someone up there looking like an Eastern Orthodox priest is actually Eastern Orthodox. And to give an example, this whole ish, the whole situation in the Ukraine thing here, right? If you study Ukrainian history, you'll find that the Ukrainians, the Ukrainians are actually Russians. So that they are ethnically Russian. And what's going on here is that just the way the United States is made up of independent independent states, and that's why you call it the United States of America. Um, that's the way uh, Russia was set up. And what the United States is now doing is doing what the Nazis did and the Germans did, they're doing Operation Barbarossa. They're going in and they're trying to destroy Russia. So, uh, that's how that works. Uh, but the thing is, this has been going on for a long time. This is, you know, what's going on in the Ukraine is not something new. It's actually something that's done historically. And one of the histor historical events was they went into Orthodox Russia, because Russia was part of the Eastern Orthodox uh, um, sphere. And the Roman Catholic Church went in and destroyed the Eastern Orthodox Church. Now what they did is they set up something in place. It looks like Orthodox. It looks like it's Eastern Orthodox, but it's not Eastern Orthodox. It's part of the papacy. And that's the Unius. The Unius, if you look at the Ukrainian Church, a large chunk of the Ukrainian Church, they're actually Roman Catholics. They're not Ukrainians, they're Germans. And this actually occurred between World War One and World War Two, and it really, this minute I got across, and it really, yeah, I always got to make sure it's recording, and it really made it difficult for the people. Reason being that they could no longer choose to worship the way they wanted to, and they couldn't believe what they wanted to believe either because they were forced into Roman Catholic theology. So this is sort of what's happening now. This is what I say you really really can't uh, judge things by their appearance. You do at some point in time have to ask deeper questions and go into things in a more uh, a more thorough manner. Uh, and the thing is five minutes like a lot of these YouTube videos that talk about science in five minutes well they, you, you can't do that in five minutes. Five minutes is not in depth as I said once before. <laughs> you do have to do more. Spirituality is not about lighting candles and sitting cross like a, uh, in, your, in your bedroom sheets. That's not spirituality. That's a very superficial spirituality. That's uh, basically shallow. So, uh, uh, let me see here. We're coming up to the end of the street here and uh, I think I'm going to stop vlogging here because my arm is getting tired. So, I'll talk to you a little bit more when my arm recovers. <laughs> we'll talk more about the philosophy and theology and the differences between the two. Well, let me give you the time and date stamp for this vlog. Now I have the date actually. 
It's uh, Friday, April uh, 25th. It's about 7 p.m. and 12 hours. That was uh, just about 19 hours into the day of uh, Friday, April 25th, 2014. That's the, the uh, estimated time and date stamp. They didn't have everything I needed. So uh, now I have to go to the other store, TNT, the Chinese store, the Asian store and get what I need there. So, one store didn't have it, I'm gonna go check with the other store, see if they have it. Anyways, that's the way things are going right now. Uh, so, as I cross these uh, streets here, uh, I'll get back to you uh, when I'm heading more towards TNT. All right, take it easy. Okay, I know it's recording now. <laughs> the beep didn't go off again. But we're past our halfway mark. This is where we came from. This is where we're going. So we're past the halfway mark. We're now on our way to TNT uh, for Food Basics. They didn't have what I needed. So, well, that means I had to go to a second store. So, but instead of cutting through my place, uh, just go through straight through here. Uh, makes it a lot easier. Anyways, as I was saying, what about uh, the spirituality? A lot of people, most, you know, most people, don't really think about the spirituality. It's kind of a shallow thing. Most people, but particularly most girls anyways, uh, spirituality is uh, scented candles and yoga mats, and that's as far as it goes. That's as deep as it goes, too. Unfortunately, this is the trend for most things. Most people say rather superficial they don't go in depth into things otherwise they'd be geeks <laughs> well and that's what see, that's what makes a geek a, a geek a geek a geek is a person who does go in depth into things he does things uh, in the he meaning uh he man the species the pronoun for man the species not the gender the geek he um does go in depth in things, and that's what he likes to do. He likes going, and not really likes going. It's in many cases, it's an obsession. You look at something, and you can't resist asking why, or taking it apart and seeing how the thing works. That's sort of the hallmark of a geek. And this is for readers. This is for theater. This is for a whole bunch of different things. So it really depends. And what your thing is, what your obsession is, that's what makes you a geek. And uh, even there, when you're searching for what you think is the truth, you need, you need to, get, again, be careful for the appearances. Something can appear to be true, but not necessarily is. And ironically, if you think about it for a bit, this actually connects to gaming. And I was contacted by a gaming group uh, for a partnership, so I'm thinking that over, work, thinking of how to work that out. Because there are com some complications. I'm not a simple TV channel, I'm a network. And it's not supplying me personally with money, but it's supplying the research with money. So I gotta figure out how that works. But uh, in gaming, particularly if you have to go on these quests, sometimes there are enemies who appear as good designed to trap you and then devour you. So this is something true spiritually if you're actually doing spirituality for real. That there are not all things out there are benign, even if they appeared to Sorry, I need to check my, my uh, time here. Even if they appear to be benign, they're not necessarily benign. And this is something, if you are going into spirituality, you do need to check beneath the covers to see what it is you're dealing with in terms of the spirituality. And in terms of my case, where I picked up the covers, and I found out that uh, for my spirituality, for the Eastern Orthodox, God is a father. He's not a war god, he's not angry, he's not mean, he's not mad. And you don't have to appease him. What you do do, what you do have to do in some ways, and this is not you have to, you, well, well, if you don't do this, you're not with me. It's not that case. 
Let me cross the street and I'll talk to you again. Okay, we're recording. I have, do have to have you facing the other way in order to see that I'm recording sometimes. So we are recording again. We crossed the street. So now we can talk more about uh, philosophy and, and walking. Uh, so, as we do this, I was talking more about theology and spirituality. Now we're going to connect theology, spirituality with philosophy. And that's it. Eastern philosophy and Western philosophy are completely two, two, complete, two completely different things. Western philosophy is simply thought, and that's all, and, and concept, and that's as far as it goes. Eastern philosophy is heavily integrated with reality, and is part of your everyday life. So there is a strong integration between the two. And this is where you bring in theology. Western theology follows the same line as Western thought. There is a disconnection between God and yourself. And ironically, even though in Eastern philosophy, Eastern, Eastern theology, uh, you're supposed to have in philosophy that connection, that mind, spirit, body, spirit connection, is not there anymore. Or actually, if you look at it carefully, you look at history, it was never there. What Eastern Christianity does is gives you uh, the option to become, to have a relationship with God as the Father, and then lays out a set of somewhat instructions on how to proceed in doing that, how to get over our spiritual blindness. And these, our spiritual blindness uh, is a state of our, uh, of our physical existence, and as such, we need to exercise to get over it. And this is done through a variety of forms of meditation. And I said medita prayer is one form of meditation. Fasting is another form of meditation. The, the level of meditation that you get to often determines what type of relationship you have with uh, God the Father. The reason being is, is that as you go through these meditations, you open yourself up to this relationship. And as that occurs, and you open yourself up to the relationship, and you nurture the relationship, you then start growing spiritually. So this is it's a very, and that's why when you look at Pascha, you look at uh, the way uh, Eastern Orthodox celebrate Pascha, it's not about morbid morbidity. It's not about the temporal or the physical or, or about death. It's about life after death. It's about the resurrection of the soul. And eventually, and this is why we don't donate organs, the body is going to be reunited with the soul. We're going to be resurrected, both soul and body, at the end of the world. So, you got to think about that. So, I think I'm going to leave it here for now. We're almost at a cutoff point. So, <laughs> I'll talk to you on the way back. Democratic Earth. Earth.